And the thing is, it's called the breaking of the axe. Yeah, interesting holiday to have a blood moon breaking of the axe. And it talks about a whole lot of stuff of concerning that holiday, but I'm not going to get into that. But what I'm going to talk about that I ran into people yesterday having conversations, of course, about one with history and uh, another one I was sharing them about, you know, my YouTube channel, Matt Johnson Reality, and how, you know, just researching history is is to truly find out what is things are supposed to be done the way it's supposed to be done. Is that that simple? You just research history and history supposed to speak for itself that if something is correct or incorrect, right? I mean, I, you will think that God has to send an angel somewhere to say, Mac, thus saith the Lord, here's the vision. This is why the, the church is going the wrong direction. Nope, he didn't have to do that. He just like, look at human history, you know, and seeing a pattern cycle of ridiculously uh, uh, things that happen concerning uh, the wrong direction, period. The wrong direction of establishing things and pretty much the outcome is supposed to tell you that is wrong, <laughs> you know? That people don't want to allow outcomes to say, hey, this is wrong. And if it's wrong, to what extent is how it's going to affect me and everybody else in the near future, you know what I'm saying? That nobody's not considering, well, too many people are not considering strongly to that extent that they're not trying to even trying to find the question is. But the topic of this message is called being religiously incorrect. I know y'all know the political correct, being political correct, they, you know, got that saying, but I want to talk about the church. Uh, how um, the scriptures, the scriptures, not me, uh, but the scripture says that they, that this, an incorrect uh, pattern will happen. You know what I'm saying? Um, Jesus said it, you know, like I was talking about yesterday about the, uh, the ramifications of, of, of not understanding the, that the word of God, that when you do something incorrect, you you need to factor to what extent of how it's going to affect everyone else, including you. Of you, if you want the right direction. I mean, if you sincerely want the right direction concerning living life, you know what I'm saying? You need to consider the ideal of this because it's just too many scriptures in the Bible of Jesus, you know, saying that that. You know, uh, Matthew 24, saying that they, that, that, uh, I, I like what he talked to the disciples. It says that, you know, disciples ask the question, what's going to happen in the near future? First thing, it's, it's all about the first thing when you hear God. You know, the first thing that comes out of Jesus' mouth is, it's the, will be the profound things. It will be like the main thing. You need to understand. If you do not understand this main thing, you're not going to understand everything else. It's that kind of situation. And he says, bam, straight off the bat, Jesus says, take heed that no man deceive you. I mean, take heed that no man deceive you. Would you think that will be a, you know, a... Uh, uh, Whoa, I need to find out what's this deception going on here. I need to find out something going on here, you know, kind of approach to it. It's not that approach, unfortunately, that I was talking to a friend of mine at the bar. Yeah, I was talking to a friend of mine. He wanted to know about how much I knew about the word of God and stuff like that. And but I was like more likely was just revealing Pat the history and letting the history reveal what is going on right now you know what i'm saying is really you know i didn't i didn't really touch in detail the word of god i just showing the history of what going what has happened and what has been ignored courtesy of this religious in to being religious incorrect system 
of how people are ignoring the ideal of how in the world you can look at the Acts Church and and all of a sudden in the near future there's this ideal system called the Catholic Church that's supposed to make sense of being a true representation of Jesus Christ when they're both night and day, you know, that you can just simply ignore that, you know, concerning looking at history. I mean, it's not even about the Bible. It's about history. The, the church is doing this. We was talking about that. We was like, read, you know, Acts 2 and, you know, read to Acts 2 to Acts 3 and Acts 4, Acts 5, showing that how the uh, Peter and the apostles were on beast mode. They were healing people, delivering people, establishing church. You know what I'm saying? They, they were doing all this action. Bam, get arrested. Bam, angel break them out. Boom, they're back at it again. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and seeing this aggressive a uh, movement, that uh, this aggressive movement of the force, which is the, supposed to be the church, supposed to be the identity of this aggressive movement of really bringing deliverance and salvation and healing to those that are needed and getting them a closer relationship with God. I mean, this aggressive movement, then all of a sudden, fast forward, boom, a Catholic church is here and they are just, you know, doing all these religious things and that are like so contrary to God, worshiping Mary and idols and all stuff. How in the world you can look at this and then look at that and says, oh, Practicing true Christianity, you know what I'm saying? Oh, uh, it's and and people and I was telling him that people I run into people that went to Bible colleges and some seminaries, and they know about the incorrect uh situation concerning the Catholic Church establishment history of when Constantine took over the uh Roman Empire and established the uh pretty much the Roman church, they call it. And and they know about this information. I'm like, well, you know about this information, and but they are in more power and or more likely they have gave Christianity the perception of a religious system. You know what I'm saying? How could that come about when we have the scriptures and we have the word of God that clearly shows the ideal blueprint of the church and how could this facilitate and continue to facilitate well you know thank god for people like martin luther that just you know uh was confused about the situation and found a a, a, a bible and looked at the catholic rules and look at the bible rules and like what the heck are these people doing you know uh, I, okay I mean, what the heck are these people doing? These people are going way contrary to the scriptures, and that's supposed to establish the Protestant movement, the protest against this ridiculous, far-fetched system to truly establish the Christian Christian church system. And how we was talking about throughout human history, how every now they create, of course, more uh, different denominations and you know and it's like look, looking at it and from from I guess hindsight from my view I mean I'm like trying to figure out where is these people that are saying whoa something's wrong here you know what I'm saying where are the something wrong here people that will is going to try to help people understand the true biblical scriptures and the idea that the New King James, I mean, well, the King James Version Bible, it, to me, I mean, y'all could say whatever you want to say, but it's not that not that difficult. It, it's, it's, it's not that difficult to understand. It sort of kind of, you know, can throw people off, but it's not difficult to understand certain key parts of an idea of how the church system is supposed to be cultivated in it. It's not hard. And I'm just trying to figure out people throughout human history, how could they just see these simple ideal uh, patterns as the unity of the church, the unity of the spirit, unity of the faith that's in Ephesians 4. That ain't difficult to ter interpret. And and I was telling him about uh, 1 Corinthians 10, I mean, 1 Corinthians 1, it talks about, you know, 
that we are supposed to, God is faithful, and that we are called to come to the fellowship of Jesus Christ, the fellowship of Jesus Christ. Didn't mention no conference, didn't mention no rev revival, didn't mention no uh, these other events that are going on, but it did say the fellowship of Jesus Christ that we will, for the purpose, and you know, that we will be in the same mind, same judgment, having no division. Same mind, same judgment, having no division. How could you not? not interpret this scripture simple passage of seeing that this is supposed to be the makeup if we're going to truly be the church that we supposed to be the church i mean this religiously incorrect system is just too much going on it, it, i mean it's it's too far fetched to the idea outcome that christianity is supposed to be operating in i mean the ideal of Jesus Christ healing people, saving the sick, raising the dead, the the Peter and the apostles, bam, uh, healing the sick, raising the dead. This pattern right there, if that is the pattern of the force of the ideal church system, that is supposed to be facilitated in a great measure. I mean, period. The outcome should speak for itself. Not, not well, this uh, ideal of healing may not happen to this person or this ideal uh, uh, pastor, uh, uh, you know, that this a different kind of miracle. Uh, you know, it's just crazy what all these excuses of the idea that the pattern of the church system is not operating according to how, what is advertised in the scriptures and how many people are just not black broadcasting this and, you know, as I say, uh, for uh, Second Timothy four, you know, it shall come a time. It should, Paul says there shall come a time. That means it's coming. There's no like, well, maybe that time ain't here, and maybe the time. No, Paul says it's coming that men will not endure sound doctrine. They shall heed themselves the teachers of itchy ears, you know, believing fables and straying away from the truth. It didn't say that maybe this, Paul didn't say it might come. It says for a come, a time, the time will come, you know, is what this, now this religiously incorrect ideal um, system that is going on right now is horrible. It's, I don't know how to describe it. It's, it's horrible. And I was talking to the guy at the bar. I was telling him that, you know, I'm finding out how much people pleasing is what is so generated in people wanting to continue to go the wrong direction that they are, are so much aiming to want to please people than anything than it be about pleasing God. I mean, concerning of telling the truth of what's going on in this world system is what is really the driven force of it going religiously incorrect is what I have discovered concerning doing all of this. And it's sad that people please people as what Paul says, Galatians 1.10. How could you please men? Are you persuaded to please men? If you are pleasing men, you cannot be a servant of Christ. It's, it's sad to me that I have to discuss this God, this word of God in a bar. I'm discussing this to this person's bar that, that, irritated me and said why I can't be discussing this situation in a arena of where Christians are at to concerning to talk about true ideal Christianity is what really the travesty of this church system is really performing and not really understanding that Peter is correct you know first Peter uh, 4 and 17 judgment must come to them that believe not the gospel of God. It's just crazy that I experienced last night concerning this conversation with a person at a bar. All right, but that's the message. Hope y'all understand what I'm saying. Hope it makes somewhat sense to you. Stop the religious and be, stop being religiously incorrect concerning whatever is going on that you say is of Christ, but not of Christ. That's the message. God through the glory of him forever and ever in Jesus' name. Amen.